Hi, my name is Lizardo Prieto and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the equivalence classes and boundary values analysis technique. Well, equivalence classes and boundary values is a method that is applied to analyze the input and output values for the methods that we are going to test, right? Uh, equivalence classes and boundary values is a technique used in test-driven development when we are creating new software. So the idea behind this method is to check the values that behave in a similar way, correct or incorrect, and determine usually with help of the boundary values where the ranges start and end. So, let's check an example. Imagine we have to code a specific function, and the function has to return the number of students that have passed a specific subject. So, we may have a function interface or definition like this public int because we want to get the amount of students that passed students statistics that gets a file with a specific set of values that we're gonna see right now okay this function May, may face some errors. Imagine the input file doesn't exist or cannot be accessed, or maybe some of the data inside the file is not valid, right? So in Java, we have exceptions in order to notify errors. So let's produce a specific error, an error mm, related to this function or the class that contains this function or method. So we may call the specific exception as custom define exception. Okay. Well. So let's apply the method and we saw that we should check the input and output values, right? Regarding the input, input file is a file that can have at maximum 100 elements where each element is as follows first we have the name okay and this field is a string with at most 20 characters. The thing is that obviously a name should contain a minimum amount of characters as well. In this case let's define that the minimum is one, okay? Because otherwise we are facing the empty uh, string and it's, it's a nonsense, right? Look at this. Both numbers are the boundary values. This is the limits. And in this case, the limits between 1 and 20, all of them will behave the same. This is a valid case. Okay? Then we have something else. We have the gender. And this is a set where we can have female or male. Okay. And finally, we have 
a list of scores that may be an array of values up to five scores right so again minimum one maximum five and the values in this case are float or double given that the values are decimal numbers again if we think about boundary values we consider the scores to be between 0 or 0, .0, 0 if we consider it a single decimal up to 10.0 right perfect so we have the the format for the input and uh, the output is the amount of students that pass the the subject so probably the function will do some calculation with the scores and average and if this if the result is uh, higher than a specific threshold maybe 5 5.0 then uh, the student will count as uh, a student that passed the, the subject okay then what comes next well what comes next is once we uh, identify the the different ranges the equivalence classes for instance for name we know that the strings for the valid cases are between 1 and 20 characters, right? So we can define tests according to this range. We should test, for instance, well, the first, the first general uh, equivalence class is that the input file is valid, right? This equivalence class, in order to be tested, can group a lot of different specific or smaller valid cases this is the file exists the file uh, contains valid data this is a structured data in the format it should have and also every single field is in the in the proper ranges right this is the the name is between 1 and 20 the gender is female or male and the scores contains um, up to five scores uh, using double numbers so we can group a lot of different small equivalence classes in a single test right but for the non valid equivalence classes this is imagine uh, the input file doesn't exist okay we should define a test for that and in order to do so we should well pass to this function as file path maybe an empty string okay leading to a non-existent file this way we can check that the function returns an error and specifically is the type of error we are looking for right also we can uh, an easy strategy is to define a file with a valid case and then start modifying on this file this is to copy paste this is replicate the valid file rename the file uh, a good uh, a good tip is to rename this this file with the test name okay if we have some kind of naming criteria like uh, requirement 01 or functional requirement 01 this case uh, not valid equivalence class and maybe zero one then we can take this name that maybe is the name for the test function and the, the file that we have copied rename into something like this dot txt or dot json or dot 
anything, right? Okay. So, once we group the test cases, okay, the equivalence classes to create the minimum amount of test, uh, test cases, uh, we can define, for instance, these uh, non non valid cases. For continuous ranges, we check the boundary values, and then the idea is okay. Let's check. Well, the file uh, doesn't exist. The file contains maybe wrong data, and then once we are checking the specific fields, like, okay, the string is not valid, then we start checking with an empty string, okay? Then, for the valid case, we should check one character, right? That is the boundary. Then two characters as well, because this is the following value, uh, the valid the following valid value to the boundary limit then 19 20 again the boundary value and 21 this should return an error as well so we are checking here two non-valid cases and then the rest are valid okay for the range, okay, we should check the values, female, male, maybe an empty character, this is gonna, gonna fail, okay, and uh, something different, like an uppercase X or a dollar sign, whatever you want, okay, and again, this will fail. So this is empty value, and this is something else that doesn't belong to the set of valid values, right? More tests regarding scores. We should check two different things. First, the length or the amount of scores that we can process, and then the values that can uh, those those um, elements have, right? So, regarding the number of scores, as an invalid case, we should check an empty array of values. Then, an array with one element. with two elements, with four elements, with five elements, and then with six. Empty and six will return error. The other cases, boundary values and the following and previous values to the boundaries should return valid. They are in the same equivalence class, so they should behave the same. Okay, that's the idea behind equivalence classes. That the, the values belonging to a specific equivalence class will behave the same. Regarding the the scores, zero dot zero. 10.0 How can we check the non-valid things? Okay, we cannot have, for instance, a negative score. So, the first value, considering that we are checking a single decimal digit, should be minus zero 01. And this is gonna be invalid. Then, we should check 0 0.0, valid, 0 0.1, that is the following, 9.9, .9, 10, and 10.1, okay. And again, 
two invalid cases and the rest are valid okay with this we have full coverage of the input now remember this method applies as well to the output so we should have multiple input files okay not just to test the different invalid cases and the valid cases but also to check conditions that apply to valid outputs in this case we should create configurations in order to get zero students that passed the, the subject one student n minus one given that the upper limit is 100 this should be 99 students and the final element 100 students right what else we can check all of them will be valid we can try to have 101 students in the file but in this case internally the function should check that you are not inputting more than 100 elements so this should also return an error right in the form of students statistic exception okay and basically uh, that's all you just need to create the the tests and once you have the tests you can start coding this function the contents and try the tests and refine the code until everything is working so thank you for watching and if you have any question or suggestion please uh, don't hesitate in contacting me uh, up here you can see my email address and my telegram handler see you soon